don't know what happen. happened with Return to Oz, but we're not going to go there. <laughs> Sherlock Holmes is the archetype, the titan that they all fall under. Ding, ding, <laughs> round one. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the best ever. TV, films, video games, sports, if it's on a screen, we'll argue about it. I'm Morgan Jeffrey, and I'm joined by a panel of guests, each of them armed with an opinion. Their job is to convince me that their pick, and only theirs, deserves the title of the best ever. This episode, don your dear stalkers as we debate the best ever TV or film detective. Joining me on the panel are star of Line of Duty and Grace, the actor Craig Parkinson, RadioTimes.com's trends editor Lewis Knight, and RadioTimes.com's drama writer Morgan Cormack. Thank you all for joining me. Uh, Craig, you've played a few detectives in your career, some nice, some not so nice. Uh, would it be possible to pick a favourite? No, I think it's really difficult. Um, I was told uh, before we started this, I had to figure out one, mm. and I've got a, quite a big list. Yeah. Um, and uh, if, you know, if I talk about my list, you'll understand, I love a flawed detective, mm. because as an actor, we love flawed characters because we can build them, we can make them real, um, so all the detective I've got, I think, are pretty flawed. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, flaws is a great point. Lewis, what do you think makes a truly great TV or film crime solver? I think it doesn't even necessarily need to be like a profession, like where they're like kind of, you know, a formalised police officer mm. or detective. I think, yeah, just anyone who's got that real sense of curiosity and like deduction I mm. think is what really makes them quite fascinating like it could be actually kind of across a lot of genres mm. a bit they don't need to necessarily fit in a box they can be quite unique in their own way they just need to have those specific skills mm. I think to make them a good detective. Morgan how difficult was it for you to pick the best ever TV or film detective and how confident are you that your pick is going to come out on top? I'm pretty confident, yeah. but also I feel this like... Is, sorry, this is big talk, <laughs> so know, we're, we're just going to jump in there and that's say how, that. That's how we've got to start it. Okay, I um, think let's, just, let's keep up our drive, <laughs> but please carry on. I feel like in terms of thinking about like police detectives who we've seen on, on like some of our most beloved TV series, there are so many that spring to mind. Mm. But for me, I was definitely a bit more skewed as to what's come out a bit more recently and been more of the topic of conversation more recently. Yeah. And I feel has like started quite a good trend in talking about more modern, flawed police detectives yeah. in some of our dramas that we know and love. Yeah. Well, our guests are not just battling out for fun, of course. Uh, whoever comes out on top today will also get their hands on our coveted best ever trophy. Craig, you do have your number one pick for the best ever TV or film detective, but I believe you also had a few honourable mentions. Uh, did you want to run through any of those before we really get into the thick of it? I, I'd love to. Can yeah. I get my, can I get of my notes? Of course. Yeah. Obviously, I've made notes. Prepared. I, love I, don't know, I don't know how professional you've been or thought about how serious <laughs> this is. Some of us don't need them. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> oh, here we go. We've, the, <laughs> ding, ding, round one. Um, the obvious mm. would be to go for something iconic like The Wire. Sure. But where are we going? with The Wire. So I went for Lester Freeman because he's one of the quietest characters there, very clever, but I put him aside. Right. Because I moved on to somebody who I don't know if you'll know, Jim Rockford from The Rockford Files. No. Look at, look at, look. I know, I'm, I know, I know. I'm just it, not impressed. It's not <laughs> me oh, 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 oh. <laughs> James Garner, The Rockford Files, absolute classic when I was growing up. Are you aware of a seminal comedy television show called Police Squad yeah. that spurned the naked gun. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Are we sure? Yes. So we know about Frank Drebin. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm not convinced. I think you need I to feel back like, it I up. feel like there's maybe a generation gap here. But, it's fine, it's fine. Fine. but it's that's what makes this fun because I'm going to go right in now to Maddie and David from Moonlighting. Oh, okay, nice. Who 70s were classic and 80s classic. 80s classic. The greatest hair in the business, Sybil Shepherd. And I want to bring it right up to date with one of the most flawed and disgusting detectives. Ooh. <laughs> oh, okay. It's a strong word, but I know who you're going to say. Not and disgusting. You're using that word absolutely, like 100% accurately. It's fine. <laughs> but we love him yeah. because he's disgusting. It's only at certain moments does he say how much he loves his flawed team. Mm. And that's Jackson Lamb from Slow Horses, okay. who I think mm. is 
on the money for what we're talking about today. But there was somebody who went into my number one spot, but we'll we'll leave this till later. Well, no, I, like, or, unless you want me to go now. Well, this is it. Some some great some great choices, but these are all these are all runners up. Mm. Uh, I, I would love to get into who is your best ever TV or film detective. Being predominantly a, a television actor, it was I didn't really think about film that much. But I did think about somebody and a film that I loved and inspired me and when I was growing up as a kid. And it's Eddie Valiant from Who Framed Roger Rabbit. I mean, we talk about flawed. This guy is borderline alcoholic. He's deep in grief. He hates where he is in the world and he's being asked to defend a toon who killed his partner. I mean, you, one of the first scenes is you look at his desk and it's him there, Eddie there, and his partner there. That's all his stuff and it's all messy and we know that it's a day-to-day -day thing. It's all there on the other side, covered in dust. Mm. It hasn't been moved. He's still deep in grief and deeply flawed. I mean, if anyone hasn't seen Who Framed Roger Rabbit, I feel like... Then you need to stop watching and get a life <laughs> because it's absolutely fantastic. But, I, I feel like, but you're right, like, it's quite, it's, there's some dark themes in that film. What, yeah. is, what is ostensibly you know, a, a children's film or at least a, a family film, right? Well, family until the end. I'm not going to give any spoilers, but that's deeply traumatic. That, that's, it's, it's up there with Raiders for yeah, me. No, yeah, no, definitely. It's one of those, or there's that there's scene in Superman 3, I think, which had a similar uh, traumatic effect on me when I was young. I mean, what is it about Eddie Valiant, played by the great Bob Hoskins? Absolutely. Um, what is it about him that sets him apart, in your opinion, from the, the swathes of other TV and film detectives? Well, it's, it's the arc. It's the character arc. And obviously, I'm coming, I'm looking at it as an actor, but he's a hateful curmudgeon at the beginning. Mm. He's obviously, I've said he's deep in grief. Mm. But look where he comes to at the end. Mm. He helps Toontown get back. I mean, it's the most joyful ending. He, and he's a better person for it. And he's, he understands about love. Yeah. And he understands about people yeah. at the end of the day. And if you need to be, a, if, you, if you're a great detective, you need to understand people. I used to get my dad to record Barry Norman's film mm -hmm. programme. And I used to try and watch as much as I could before school, you know, much to the annoyance of my parents. I remember when Barry reviewed um, Roger Rabbit and there was a scene where he woke up sort of half drunk, handcuffed to Roger, and it was yeah. the first time that they saw each other. And you just knew that these people from completely different worlds were gonna be the greatest partnership on screen. Yeah, so I, but I was just wondering, is, is the dream role then uh, for you in future, the sequel? to Who Framed Roger Rabbit. You step in as I mean, the, son, son of Eddie Valiant. They're, they're in, I mean, I'm 11 and a half, but I, even I could not step into the shoes of Bob Hoskins. <laughs> there doesn't need to be a sequel. I, yeah. I know, where you, know where you're going from, yeah. but because it's a classic, you hate us. Um, <laughs> it stays there. Yeah. We all Don't know what it. happened with Return to Oz, but we're not gonna go there. <laughs> We'll have you back when we do uh, worst ever uh, movie sequels. I'll be we'll, there. We'll have you back. Well, Lewis, I kind of think I'm picking up <clears throat> how you're feeling about this one, maybe. But a strong, if slightly offbeat, pitch from from Craig. Mm -hmm. um, is that trophy already his? Is this one sealed up? Um, no. Okay. Frankly, <laughs> <laughs> frankly, I don't know what else I need you to can, say. You can think about it. You can. I appreciate it, the passion yeah. and the uh, the integrity of Craig's response, but I just feel it's intellectually bankrupt. <laughs> okay. So. <laughs> oh. so, in your opinion, who is, if not Eddie Valiant, who is the best ever TV or film detective? Well, now you'll see that my ageism jokes are completely in jest because okay. I'm going perhaps to one of the oldest of all detectives um, who originated in literature um, but has since gone on to be the most, according to Guinness Book of World Records, most portrayed literary character ever across film and television and on screen mm. and that is Sherlock Holmes. Mm. Now, now, are you cheating slightly? Because mm. there have been so many portrayals of, of Sherlock Holmes on television and in, and in film. 
Yeah, I was, so I was aware that this would get thrown at me, <laughs> but I've, been, I've come prepared. I've selected a Sherlock Holmes I'm, portrayal. I'm just trying to save you so they don't just immediately cry for disqualification. Yeah. yeah, no, once again, we're time traveling. I'm going all the way back though, this time to the Second World War um, for Basil Rathbone, mm. um, who are an icon of uh, stage and screen, but he portrayed Sherlock Holmes in 14 films um, across <laughs> various time periods because different studios decided some should be in Victorian times and some should be in the Second World War. Well, it, it, was, it was a big thing, wasn't it, when, when, when Sherlock came out, you know, the relatively modern now TV series, that they were bringing Sherlock Holmes yeah. into, into the modern day. Yeah. But actually, uh, you're right, the Basil Rathbone movies, some of them were set in the, the original period that the Conan Doyle stories were set in, and then the studios decided to, to bring the character up to then what was the modern day, and you had Sherlock Holmes and Watson battling against Nazis, and so, so yeah, it was, a, it was a big, big shift at the time. Yeah, I mean, who doesn't want to see Sherlock Holmes fight Nazis? Sure, I mean, that, I mean, yeah, it's that's a great the pitch. dream. I've got to say, I'm not agreeing with Lewis here, but I love that he picked Basil Rathbone mm. because that was the Sherlock Holmes that I was first introduced to. But we've got to remember what we're talking about here, the best ever TV detector. Mm. Or film. Or film, not portrayal. Yeah, what makes him the best ever? Yeah, let's dig into that. Well, it's the character still, and as I will say, and has, I think, inspired even your choice in terms of being a kind of a flawed detective. What I like about Sherlock Holmes as well, including Rathbone's one, is that he's not a member of the law. Excuse me. <laughs> Can I just ask how Sherlock Holmes, one of the most intellectual, eloquent, men ever created is flawed. Oh, Sherlock Holmes he's, is flawed. He's surely. got um, addictions, he's got social issues where he struggles, even when Rathbone's portrayal not going as far as the recent I don't. I don't, be I don't believe that the Rathbone portrayal had the uh, narrative flaws that were portrayed in the book at all. No, I think not that came that later. Extent. Not to that extent not at all. Not to that extent, no. no, but he is still quite socially awkward. I don't think I mean, socially awkward is a thought. I think yeah. we all are socially awkward to an extent. Does that make all human beings flawed? Possibly. You can be socially awkward. This is getting quite deep. I this is this getting was. very <laughs> deep. But at the end of the day, mm. when all is said and done, he's not fighting with cartoons. <laughs> Actually, uh, they did use Basil Rathbone's voice in uh, Basil the Great Mouse Detective. Uh, so he, he, at some point, he has. I thought we were but that's sticking to one portrayal. Neither here, neither here nor Can there. Can I say that's an excellent callback? That is well, a callback. Cool. That's <laughs> fantastic. I haven't heard of that film for a long time. Well, that's why I'm here for trivia like that. Your fantastic roller decks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's what I've got here. It's just yeah, useless trivia facts, which is also what my brain's full of. Um, Morgan, what are we thinking about about that choice? I mean, is it's he, an it's a cheating. For it's one a thing? nice choice, yeah. but yeah, I do feel it veers more on the side of cheating to pick an entire literary character mm. and pick like a, your favourite portrayal of him. We say cheating, I would, without being cruel, because I love Basil Rathbone, but this is a, a weak choice because mm. we can't really choose a historical character that's been yeah. portrayed, by, portrayed by many, many listen, actors. Listen, listen, Sherlock Holmes is the archetype, the titan that they all fall under. They all, they've all copied in various ways and Basil Rathbone is the pinnacle portrayal of Sherlock Holmes. What is it about oh. Rathbone's portrayal that makes it so special? Why did you pick that one? I think it is the intellectualism side that comes out of it, and, but also the charisma. I believe he's got a great supporting cast as well that comes through. You believe or you know? Oh, I know. <laughs> you know, okay. Just but choose, I'm, I'm, choose, a, I'm aware just that- Just choose your words wisely. I'm just aware there are some heathens here that don't, aren't, you know, <laughs> converted to the wow. Sherlock religion. Wow. I did want to go back to though, those, those Rathbone films. What are your earliest memories of watching them? What was it about those films in particular that captured your attention? So I re particularly remember um, one of the films called The Woman in Green, mm. which is one which also had Professor Moriarty in it, so it also introduced his, the arch nemesis, who's also an archetype for all of the arch enemies of many detectives, mm. um, as is most of the supporting characters in, in Sherlock Holmes. But I think that one just had a real sense of kind of adventure and like really Sherlock outwitting um, his, his nemesis, who mm. was also another kind of his e intellectual equal. So it was really all about the kind of the game of deduction and kind of like double cross and kind of just like generally sleuthing, which I think mm. is what everybody wants from a detective. Morgan, who is your best ever TV or film detective? Okay, well, as a TV drama writer, I was definitely more concentrated on TV, the TV aspect of this. And so my pick is Happy Valley's Catherine Kayward, who I think is, if we're having a conversation about police dramas in the past 10 years, we have to speak about Happy Valley. There's a reason why 
it's a critically acclaimed show. There's a reason why Catherine Kayward is the main character that has completely driven the drama throughout all three seasons and through a massive year, like hiatus in the middle of it. And I think, you know, we're just at the start of the award season, starting to give out awards for the most recent season. But I think the statistic was like, this most recent third and final season of Happy Valley was the most watched series on BBC in the past decade. So I feel like the stats speak for themselves. And I feel like if we're to really talk about Catherine as a character, she comes under that flawed kind of protagonist arc if we're talking about that. Well, I, I, I will say, you know, uh, Catherine Kaywood, I think a, a, a fantastic choice, mm -hmm. great performance, mm -hmm. not technically I don't believe just a plotty. a detective. Just a plotty. So are, are we go are we going to be generous and, and open this up to just TV oh, and film right. crime I solvers? Oh, wow. I absolutely think we need to be generous because, as Lewis said before, private detective. To be a detective, mm. it doesn't actually mean that we are. Because I, in my my mentions, the homework that I did. Yeah. I'm just going to throw that out there. The other mentions that didn't get number one, mm. some of them were PIs because, yeah. if we're talking about people that solve crimes. Are we saying that they're television or film detectives? Because, you know, we could put Robbie Coltrane's portrayal of Fitz mm. in there as Cracker. Was he a police detective? No, no. of course mm. he wasn't. Did he solve the crimes? Yeah, pretty much. Mm. Do people think of him as the top in the top ten TV detectives? Possibly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'd say Mulder and Scully as well. And they're investigating a lot of aliens and weird, weird, I weird think things. It's best ever TV or film detective, not best ever geek show. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, back to Catherine. Yes, please. Um, I would say that while like you look at Happy Valley and you probably think of it as more as a character-driven drama, mm. I feel like Catherine as a character is such a relatable character for so many people. Yeah. And I think when we're talking about crime dramas as a whole, which is, let's face it, a male dominated TV genre. I agree. Then we, then there are so, like the, the female portrayals of actual relatable women mm. who are working in the police force and who are dealing with very real life issues are so few and far between. And I feel like Catherine, is she's a grandmother, she's a mother, she's so deeply flawed and she's so dealing with her own grief and her own trauma. And we see multiple instances of her lashing out and not necessarily taking the easiest path or the best decisions mm. for her grandson or for those around her. And not always the most likable character Yeah, she's not the most likable, but... but I quite like the fact that she, there are so many moments that are such gems within the series where you see her as like a completely vulnerable character, but then you also see her and she's damn good at her job. Like, I feel like if anything, this most recent season opened with a scene that I feel is so relatable to so many women, which is she was first to attend her crime scene. And then two men entered the crime scene and tried to tell her what she already knew that about the person who was being found at the bottom of this you know, water ravine. Yeah. And she was completely confused as to how they were trying to tell her mm. who she already knew it was. Mm. And it was kind of just, it's a hilarious moment because she walks off and obviously like, you know, insults them. Yeah. But it's the thing of, I feel like those portrayals are so, like they're, like I said, they are so few and far between that mm. Catherine is a character that should be celebrated. But I do think she's a fabulous um, television character. She's an inspiring character, yeah, I agree. Just brilliant, her Lancashire, you know, chef's kiss. We're not but, talking about the actor, we're talking about the character. No, Let's but in the portrayal, but, of course. but, <laughs> but, I do think she's so popular, not because of anything really to do with the detective work. I feel like it's because of, oh, it's all her personal no, life I that would, people are invested I, in. I, I, I would disagree. Because I feel like this most recent season especially, it was the fact that she was the only police officer who was trying to investigate this domestic violence case and no one around her had their eyes open to it. And whether that was like a woman to woman thing within the series, I think that was such an important plot line that was explored. But also it was the fact that once again, no one was listening to her. She was trying to escalate multiple instances of you know, being scared for this woman who ultimately ended up dead. And then, you know, across the three seasons, it's also Catherine being one of the police officers that's completely switched on to the wider, like drug dealing, trafficking storyline with the Knezeviches. But I think so, she's had a lot of help along the way. 
Yeah, but I feel like she is arguably the most switched on out of all of them. Of course, she's got her team who are helping her, but we're often seeing her having to kind of argue with her superiors or it being handed over to, yeah. the, to the detectives who don't actually know that much about the case and who we saw in season two having to come to her to ask her for advice on the case that was originally hers. Would so, I be right in saying that Happy Valley is one of your favorite shows? I mean, yeah. <laughs> you, speak, yeah. You, speak yeah. With, you speak with passion about yeah, it. Yeah, because it's a great show. You, you actually, right. uh, and I absolutely agree with you. I think it's a fantastic show. She's an inspiring character. But let's look at the all-consuming grief and failure of Eddie Valiant and what happened at the end of the film, the character arc. Which, which, yeah. is, where more, every, which is more hard-hitting, Happy Valley or Who Framed Roger Rabbit? It's Let's not about hard-hitting, it's about the best ever TV or film detective. I'm going to put this to you now, <laughs> that the end of Who Framed Roger Rabbit, mm -hmm. Eddie Valiant lifted the lid over Toontown of what was happening, what Judge Doom was doing. He saved a lot of people and a lot of cartoon characters. <laughs> and it made a lot of people very happy. I'm trying to be serious when I'm talking about this. Well, Radio Times audience has also been having their say uh, on this particular uh, topic on social media. So Julia on X opted for Sherlock Holmes, although it wasn't specific uh, about which portrayal. Uh, Hannah was backing Endeavor Morse uh, Rich's vote went to Colombo, uh, while on Facebook, Max was championing Miss Marple. Oh my God, think outside the box, people. What are you doing? <laughs> called out, called out by Craig Parkinson, Max. Uh, Tamsin <laughs> argued for D.I. Jane Tennyson of Prime Ooh. Suspect. Uh, and Steph went for your colleague, Roy Grace, uh, Craig. Not a, not, a, not, not a bad choice, not the right choice. Valiant, Team Valiant. <laughs> but, but I have to make the ultimate choice and possibly incur the wrath of the internet and Craig Parkinson uh, oh. in the process. <laughs> Craig, yes. you argued that Eddie Valiant of Who Framed Roger Rabbit fame uh, was the best ever TV or film detective. Lewis, you were convinced that Basil Rathbone's Sherlock Holmes deserved the top spot. The archetype. Morgan, you were backing Happy Valley's uh, Catherine Kaywood as your favourite. Who is going to emerge triumphant and pick up the best ever trophy? I have to say, I do, I do love all these choices for different reasons. Genuinely think they're all great picks, but I think if you're talking about screen detectives, there is one who rises above all the others. There is one who has inspired so many imitators. And for that reason, the winner of the best ever TV or film detective <laughs> <laughs> is Sherlock Holmes. <laughs> Lewis, congratulations, you are today's winner. Oh my God, you like me. Oh, do we have to clap? Yeah, you have, oh, you have yeah. to clap. You have to... <laughs> Craig, thank you. Thank you for joining us. It feels like justice was done. I feel Morgan acted like a real detective. Power of deduction brought him to the right answer. So yes, justice was served. I do feel like my choice was robbed today from this episode of The Best Ever. I do feel like my pick of Happy Valley's Catherine Kayward should have come out triumphant because I do feel like she is the best ever TV detective, but it wasn't my decision. Was robbed? Did you, did you hear those pictures? Absolutely, I thought long and hard. I thought outside the box. It was intellectual, it was Shakespearean, it was correct. Thank you for joining us for The Best Ever. What did you think of this episode's verdict? And who do you think is the best ever TV or film detective? Let us know on X at Radio Times. We'll be bringing you new episodes of The Best Ever Weekly, so be sure to head to radiotimes.com forward slash the best ever for all the latest news and exclusive content from each new episode. And if you're listening to the podcast version, you can also subscribe and review The Best Ever on your podcast outlet of choice. That's all for now, but we'll be back soon with more of The Best Ever.